Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here. I've pulled out some of my colored pencils, and the colored pencils that I have pulled out are my Faber-Castell. And what I'm going to be using is this Paint a Flower Poppy. Now, this is by Altenew, and this is also a relatively new subscription that they have. Now, they have their one prescri uh, prescription. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Subscription. So, if I say prescription, I mean subscription because you know I'm going to keep saying that. Um, they have their other one that's a build a flower. So, Altenew um, is known for the layering stamps where you use multiple colors and you get this absolutely gorgeous image from the inks that you use um, to build up that image. So, as I said, this one's relatively new, but it's paint a flower, and I immediately fell in love with it because it's allowing me to use the medium that I absolutely love, and that is colored pencils. Um, that is my medium of choice. So, I think um, with this, I'm really going to enjoy it um, and will get me to use what I have in my uh, colored pencils. So I'm going to use my white colored pencil and my colorless blender um, to, to do my blending. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a card. So we're going to do a half and half video. And what I mean by that is I've just turned on my uh, phone. That's what I use to record. And I'm going to stamp my image and then I'll switch over to a voiceover because then I'll speed it up just a little bit so that you can see how I color this. So as I said, I'm going to use my Faber Castells. They're the polychromos. And then here's my color chart that I'm going to be using. Um, so my leaves are going to be in my green and blues. Um, my center of the poppy is going to be my dark shades going into brown. And then the poppy itself is going to be uh, like in a peach color. Oh, and there's a sun line there. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now we can really see those colors if I keep going down in that. So I always do like to put a card together with the colors that I use um, so that I can see that. And then I'll have on my blog a color chart of the colors that I used. So the paper that I'm going to be using for this project is one of my favorites and there's three favorites I do when I use my colored pencils I like to use a paper with a tooth um, and I like it to be thick too a lot of times you know the papers that we have they're not thick this is definitely thick all right now you can get this also in a lighter weight as well but this is the Strathmore toned gray mixed media it's 184 pounds 300 uh, GMs there, um, and this is the 6x8, which is nice because you can cut this down and you can get two pieces um, for your cards. So this comes in this paper, the toned gray, which I'll be using today. It also comes in a toned blue and a toned tan. Now, if I'm going into a white or a cream, um, very rarely do I use a white. If I do, I will use, and of course you can use your Nina Solar um, or your Recollections. And I tend to lean towards the Recollections 110 pound paper from Michaels, um, which is my local craft store, because again, it's got that tooth. It pulls out the pigment from the pencil. Otherwise, I will use a Bristol cardstock. Um, I like that weight as well, and I do like the way my pencils react that way. I am not one to use Gamzol uh, ever. I just don't like the fact that it says it's colorless and you shouldn't keep it open so you can't breathe it. I don't know if, or not colorless, odorless. Here we go again. Um, 
it's just weird to me to say use something that's odorless and you're using it and you're breathing. So that just freaks me out. So if I did use that type of a solvent back in the day, I would use baby oil and get the same results. So I've kind of gone away and my really favorite way to blend my colors when I use my colored pencils is my Prismacolor colorless blender. Derwent makes one as well. I also love using my white. So since I'm using my polychromos, I'm going to use the white polychromo. You can use the Prismacolor white as well. So let's get started and let's stamp our image um, onto our card, our cardstock. The, um, the ink that I'm going to use today is my ink on three. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to do my colorless coloring today. And this is my favorite for my color, colorless or no line coloring. You can certainly use the Simon Says Fog or Barely Beige or the Gina K Whisper or barely there and she's got a couple other colors as well um, but this is the one that i do gravitate to so let's get this stamped let's get this positioned and then what's nice is they also have a really uh, pretty image here um, to give you some inspiration on colors but remember it's a flower you can make it any color that you want um, I do like to go on the internet and just look at what color combinations I can get um, and what possible, the possible ways for coloring. Now I'm just positioning my stamp here. I'm not quite sure if I want this to come up this way or if I want it to come up from underneath and I think that's what I'm going to go with I believe with this set we get some great sentiments as well and I think I'm going to choose you are in our thoughts today um, and I think I'm going to get that positioned <coughs> so sorry still coming off of it but I'm um, I'm getting better every day um, since the holidays. So I think I'm going to put that there so that I have that sentiment there. And I know I'll reposition that at some point. So I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to make sure that my card is positioned and I'm going to pick that up lightly and then I'll press down onto onto that all right I do like to stamp um, a couple times my image just to make sure that I have a good impression and again this ink will disappear as you're coloring so I do like that image so let me pull that out move that out of our way oh put my magnet back in there all right so I'm gonna mark also so that I know to keep my image in the right place I'm just gonna put a piece of washi tape and I'm going to zoom in so once i zoom in that's where i'm going to go into the voiceover and talk about how i use colored pencils there's many ways to use colored pencils so i encourage you to look at other videos and how other people work with their color pencils as well this is just what works for me it may work for you but maybe there's also a tip or a trick that I go through that you can incorporate in how you use that. So let's get started. 
Okay, so as always, we're going to really speed this up, but I wanted to make sure that you did see, and you are going to see, all of the coloring. So again, I say, if you don't like long videos, if you would rather hear music, please, this is not for you. People like to hear me gab. Imagine that. Who knew? Anyway, so we've zoomed in. Now, of course, there are times where I forget to zoom in. So, I work... Again, the color pencils that I'm using are my polychromos, and I tend to work my color pencils like I use my alcohol markers. So when it comes to the greens, this is the first area that I'm going to work at. I put the layer of my lightest color down first, okay, just to show here's the image, here's where I'm going to start. Then I start coming in with the darkest color, okay? I immediately go from the lightest to the darkest. This is 9 out of 10, this process that I use for colored pencils. I may use a different process, it, but it all depends on the image. But 9 out of 10, this is how I'll work. So I put a layer of the light, and then I come in with the darkest, and that's where my shades are going to be, whether I'm outlining, whether I'm defining the veins, whether I'm um, defining where the shadow is going to hit, I immediately go to the darkest of the colors that I'm using. So what do I mean by that? So for each of the greens, I used three shades of green. I remember I used a May green, an earth green, yellowish, and a juniper green. So the darkest shade for my leaves is the juniper green. That's what I mean when I say I come in with the darkest shade when I go from lightest to darkest. There is always another color that is absolutely the darkest. Now, in some cases for the greens, it's a blue. It's, a, it's usually indigo. I could also use a super dark green. Um, that almost looks black that I could use for the darkest shades as well. So on top of the colors that I've chosen for my image, there's always this one super dark, and it's always usually black, indigo, or it could be absolutely a, either the dark cherry or the darkest of the purples. That's what I used for the deepest of the shade. That comes in after my colors have been defined. I fill in with that. Just like you can see, I come in with the white on the tips. That adds my highlight. When it comes to the paper, especially this paper, whenever I use the mixed media toned gray, tan, or blue, it is my absolute favorite paper to use my colored pencils on. Um, I wish they would make it in a toned white. I know that sounds funny. Okay, maybe a toned ivory. Um, but I do love... Now, here I apologize. I, I had to stop for a second. And, of course, I didn't zoom in. I do zoom in, so hang in there. I'm just working on the center of the flower right now. So I realize this, and we'll get close again. Okay. So when I do use this paper, I will have that highlight for the white especially when coloring florals. Um, you know, you, you, that shows where the light is coming in. It shows that that petal has a curve to it. Um, that's what your white. And it all depends on where you put that white, whether you put it on the tips, or you could actually put it in the center of the petals. It all depends of what petal you're working on. So always sit back and look. Again, I do not worry about the light source. And, and you'll see that now that we've started into the petals, the larger petals, you can see, I started with the darkest shade, which is the burnt orange. Then I come in with the pompion red. Then I come in with my cinnamon. And then I come in with the light flesh. And now I'm coming in with that white. Now I'm going to come through and I'm going to blend those colors together. So for this, I do layers because it's a pretty large area and I can keep building on that. I always cross over 
with those colors. Now, I promise you'll see this because I do zoom back in. Okay, so I also am coming in with my pit pen because, again, that's technically India ink. So this isn't going to smear, smudge, or do anything. Okay, um, I do like my Faber-Castell pen. And there we go, we zoomed in, finally. And I'm taking it um, petal by petal. So you can now see, I went in with the darkest. I'm coming in with the next. I'm not necessarily making sure that it is solid coverage. I'm using a very light hand to put these colors down, okay? When it comes to the florals, I do like that sketchy look. To me, it lets the petal look natural, more natural. I don't want it to be solid. You can see I'm using my blender brush, my blender pencil, sorry about that, to blend these colors together. When I see the line between the colors, I'm just gonna come back in with one of them to go back and forth. And that will slowly remove that true definition of what those sections are separated. So again, two different techniques. For the greens, I put an entire layer of the light, then went back in with the darkest, built my way back out. For the petals, I'm starting from the center and I'm working my way out to the edge, especially the larger ones. Now, I had made a comment that I don't worry about the light source. And honestly, I don't. I, I really don't. I know I probably should. I'm going to be honest. I, I just don't. I, I enjoy this craft. And I'm not saying if you look for the light source or take notice of where your light source is, you're not going to enjoy this craft. Absolutely, you are. What I'm saying is I don't stress over it. It won't stop me from creating. And in this flower, you're going to see a couple of the areas where I definitely, I lost my train of thought when it came to the flower. Did it make me stop? Absolutely not. I kept on going. It's still a beautiful image. Okay, but there is a section and it's these petals that I'm working on now. You've got this, the petals that are towards the front of us. Okay, so the ones that are at the bottom. Um, this, I didn't use, for this one it's okay, the way that it's flipped. You know, I have the light source coming off the side. I have the light source coming in off of the bottom. It's the one that I'm actually going to work on last, that last petal. So you can see I'm using the darkest shade to define each of the petals, to create that slight bend in the petal, and to also differentiate between the petals, to say, okay, here's a petal here, here's a petal here, and so forth. Okay, and you know what? What's really funny when I do the voiceover, my hands are moving like you all can see me. I'm just, just a little side note. Okay, so back to the petal. So you can see this one's got a bigger, because again, a bigger highlight, because it's closer to us. That I will take notice of. But you can see that petal right in the front. See how you just see that line going across? I should have added a little bit more of the darker shades and not so many so much of the white okay because technically that was that's down in the valley okay it's not up on the top the outside of it is but it didn't destroy the picture it's not something to say this is no good let's throw it away we always keep going we always keep creating and every time we do something we will continue to learn and take that in now will i remember that i don't know I may forget and I may do it again, but I'm good with it. <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed the image. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a gray, um, a very, you know, a medium tone gray, and I'm just going around my image. I'm not creating a harsh line. I'm just creating a little bit of a shadow so that that image will just pop forward to me. And you can use any color that you want. You could have gone with a gray, like I did, or a blue, or a green, or a brown. Whatever, whatever you choose. I just like to do that to help it pull out. And then I use my blender just to fade that out. 
All right, so now let's go back to the live video and go back to normal speed. Okay, so the coloring is done. I'm sure I, I know I got through all throughout that. So this is what our image looks like. Now, what I do like to do too, as you can see, you know, I used the, um, in both my Faber-Castell um, pit pen or I do like to use the Arteza's um, uh, ink on it um, pens as well. Uh, I like the tip on these and I love to add those accents that come off. So the only thing that I was looking to accent there was just the center of the poppy, um, just to make that a little bit bolder. Um, for that. Now, again, you can keep on adding um, these lines and, and have all of that, but I also wanted to keep it just to the color. So now let's get our sentiment in there. And you know what? I kind of changed it just a little bit. I really want to do the so grateful for you sentiment. So I'm going to pull that one from the stamp set and I'm just going to put that right there. I'm going to put that in my stamp tool and I'm going to reach under here and grab my marker with my washi tape. And I just want to make sure that's straight. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to use, I want to use a gray actually. So it's going to kind of be a, a gray on gray. I'm choosing the Gina K Moonlit Fog. Usually when I do use my colored pencils, you have a softer, excuse me, look when it comes to them. Um, it's, it's not, I mean, you can make it harsh depending upon how you, you color it. But to me, especially when you do a no line water coloring, it's just got this soft effect. Yes, I'm throwing things. Did you notice how many times I threw things? I'm just saying, my goodness. Um, so if I do that, it's always a soft color. It's a, a softer blue or a green or a gray. Um, it, I usually do not, I hardly ever use a black unless my image is stamped in black. Okay, so in, I know I've had that question a couple times. Um, you know, black sentiments, they're great. But to me, if I put it against this, it kind of counterbalances when it comes to this. I've also had questions on what this is. This is by Nuvo. This is a sweeper brush. Um, if you notice, as I'm using, you know, those colored pencils, I don't take my hand and do this. I will actually come in with this and brush away any of the accent because then the color, the pigment won't move. Some, I've done that and you get this pigment because you get those little bottles and you're actually pushing that pigment across. So I'm sure I explained that too while I was using um, the colored pencils as well, but um, that's what this is. And that's the only thing I use it for. So what I want to do now is I'm going to grab my card base. My card bases are usually always white or ivory. Um, I try, I very rarely use colored card bases. Now you can at this point, because then you automatically have a a border that goes around and you know what I think as I'm talking I think I will do that just to use up one of my colored card bases now with this I think I actually I know you guys are probably going, ooh, but let's use this color. 
And push that down. And then I think there is just another color that I just want to put around that. Let me grab that. Okay, so I'm going to go with this color as well. So I want to cut this. These are going to be very thin borders. Extremely thin. Because the piece that we colored on was cut four by five and a quarter. The mixed media toned gray. Remember, my card bases are always four and a quarter by five and a half, nine out of 10. They are always top folding. So the mat in the rust color that I'm using here is actually cut to four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So we have this extremely thin border going on around the piece. Then I'm going to take this and we're going to, again, I'm going to have a thin border. This is not cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. So again, I'm going to have this thin border that goes around and I know I'm off, but that's okay. So this green is accenting this, and then this border is actually pulling out the peach tones that I've used in those colors. The, um, I just want to add some accents. You, you don't have to at this point, but I am going to look for, I think I'm actually going to add Let's see. See, I never plan. This is one of the vintage Nouveau drops. So these are, um, they are satin, or they dry satin. Oh, wait a minute. This one would probably be cool. I think, yep, that's it. So we're gonna add some dots in the center of the piano. Just like that. And that is our card. So I do hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, color pencils are my medium of choice. I really do enjoy working with them and I'm always learning. I want to keep learning more. Um, but again, I know there's things that I'm missing. Um, I do this. I just love the effect of what a colored pencil can provide. So as always, everything that I used will be linked down below in the video description. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below as well. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. By ringing the bell, you're notified when the next video is live and ready for you to watch. I hope everyone is having a great day. Enjoy, but always remember what is most important for us to do every single day. Always be creative.